in most developing countries, remittances are either the second largest inflow or the largest. They surpass foreign direct investment, portfolio flows, foreign aid. And that's really a phenomenon of the last 10 to 15 years. So I was just interested in what this money, this huge flow of money into developing countries was getting used for, where the assumption was it was for subsistence, food, clothing, housing, maybe education or health care, all important. But what I was finding was that after you controlled for those particular alternatives, a substantial uh, and increasing percentage of the overall remittances were being used for venture capital funding of new businesses, were helping to start new businesses, and were, uh, through those new businesses, helping to open up the economies of many developing countries, particularly in areas of the world where um, other forms of venture capital are uh, much more difficult to flow into, sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, and the like. One of the things that I found early on was that these remittances from immigrants, after you controlled for other sources of income, had a material impact on the availability of venture capital. But that's really venture funding. What about foundings of new ventures? You could think of a world where migrants might be very good at sending money home to some counterparty who's got great ideas. But one of the things I also found was that above and beyond the venture funding, there were these founding impacts, the counts of new businesses in many of these developing countries are going up, which meant that the money that was going home was also carrying with it ideas, and ideas about how new businesses could be founded and how they could be grown. And it's really, I think, one of the most uh, interesting for me findings in this research, because it means that both financial and social remittances are tied together, tied closely together. And I think it goes back to the importance of these dyadic relationships between migrants who are living very often in developed countries like the U.S. or the U.K. and their counterparts, their extended family or community members back home. They have an ability to communicate what that money is for as well as the money itself. And the fact that they can do that and do that over thousands of miles and uh, great differences in terms of geography and politics uh, in society that separates them really testifies to the strength of these dyadic relationships and the potential, I think, for migrants to make a difference not just in their host but back in their home countries for economic growth and opportunity. I think one of the interesting implications of this research for economic development is that individuals who are here as migrants uh, and who are taking advantage of, of being a part of a host country economy such as the U.S. or U.K. can be substantial drivers of growth back home. Uh, that if we give them the opportunity to make those dyadic connections through communities, uh, through extended family and the like, that they can do much of the work that in the past we might have relied on for foreign aid or for foreign direct investment. And to some extent, this makes good sense, right? These are individuals who know the investment opportunities better than we do. So to the extent that we can nudge that forward without trying to smother it by too much public policy, we're probably doing more good.